Did you know that there was once a time when Mike Tyson faced a psychopath in the ring and drove him to true madness? On October 20th, 2000, Michigan served as the setting for one of the most scandalous fights in boxing history. Two true psychopaths met in the ring. In one corner there was a living legend, the iconic Iron Mike. In the other, a crazy fighter named Andrew Galota. The event itself promised to bring fireworks to the world of sports, but it ended up only bringing a scandal that is still talked about to this day. Welcome. In today's video, we will relive the fateful night when Mike Tyson drove Andrew Galota crazy in the ring. Get comfortable, because I'm about to take you back more than 20 years to witness one of the most unheard of moments in the history of the sport. Our journey begins here. Before the catastrophic fight, Mike wasn't necessarily experiencing the best moment of his career. From being the young phenomenon who patiently made his way to the championship belt, he became just another fighter who let himself be consumed by life itself. Prison, drugs, street fights, among other events, gave Tyson the reputation of being an unstable athlete. But that didn't make him any less popular as a fighter. Despite his life outside the ring being a true whirlwind of misfortunes, fans still loved to see the beast that emanated in the ring. However, there was another boxer who could easily compete against Tyson in terms of madness. His name? You already know it. Andrew Golota. Golota was a fighter who, despite possessing all the qualities of a future champion, was weak in one small aspect, mental health. That small but vital factor occasionally led him to go crazy in the ring. But just as had been happening with Iron Mike, his crazy behavior made Golota much more popular in the eyes of the fans. That's why when it was announced that he would be next on the list of contenders to face Mike Tyson, the fans were incredibly excited. For them, this would be a fight from which many surprises could be expected, and they weren't wrong to make this observation. A month before the battle, the press conference took place. Both fighters were expected to be there at the same time, but Tyson arrived really late. The beginning of the conference focused on Golota, who claimed to be in the best shape of his life, physically speaking. By the time the former undisputed world champion appeared, three hours after the scheduled time, he made it more than clear that he was ready to face Galotta. Finally, on October 20, 2000, the showdown between the two psychopaths took place. First round. Tyson's left hand broke the ice. It wasn't the first time he faced a giant in the ring, so he already had a predefined target. With body shots, Mike would break Galotta's armor blow after blow until he left him weak and defenseless. Surprisingly, the Polish psychopath showed respect for Iron Mike. Stepping back, he let him advance until he put himself in high-risk situations with the ropes behind him. His counterattacks didn't seem to maintain enough strength to shake Mike's world. Therefore, for the last minute, Tyson began to tempt fate and change his target to the head. There was less than 15 seconds left until the end of the round when a powerful right hook exploded on Galota's eyebrow. The impact managed to knock down the Polish giant without warning, shocking the audience present in the venue. Galota got up after the count of three, but it was extended to the regular eight. Immediately, Andrew's face changed from determination to concern. He seemed compelled to continue with the fight, even though there was no one else around him. Looking fearfully in Mike's direction, he heard what would become his lifeline, the sound of the bell. Second round. Dripping blood from the cut above his eyebrow, Galotta came out to defend his honor, but attacking Tyson only provoked a beast he wasn't ready to tame. When Mike returned the favor with a killer combination of punches, the Polish giant had no choice but to try to cover his body to avoid the highest level of damage possible. With clinches, he tried to calm down Mike's aggressive offense. It was when Mike returned to what he does best, attacking the body. This prompted an exchange that Galotta didn't come out well from, and it had only been a minute since the start of the episode. By the time Tyson went back to targeting his head, Galotta really felt fear. Being in the best shape of his life didn't stop the punches. 
Every two punches, he threw himself at Iron Mike's body, but how much longer could the Polish giant escape his fate? The program continued its course, with slow-motion replays of the best moments of the previous round. Suddenly, when Golota and Tyson were supposed to be seen returning from their corners to the center of the ring, the image captured by the cameras was incredible. They were trying to force the Polish giant to put on his mouth guard. This was a clear sign that the one who had claimed to have everything in order to defeat the great Iron Mike refused to go out to fight another round against him. Walking around the ring, head down, Golota even pushed the referee when he approached to ask him to return to the fight. He had truly been scared after just two rounds against the legend. While Golota represented madness, he had never been seen losing his head like this before. Time kept ticking and the bell demanded that the fighters continue with the match. The struggle seen from Golota's corner was incredible. He looked like a spoiled child who doesn't want to take his medicine. Probably many people in the venue were confused, but not him. Golota was very clear about it. There was no force in this world that could force him to fight another episode against Iron Mike. He had had enough, and there was nothing left but to give the victory to Mike Tyson. While his corner celebrated, Mike's face was a true poem. He was upset. But more upset was the audience. When Golota was allowed to leave the ring, like a true coward, his torment had only just begun. Booze, trash and drinks thrown at him adorned his body on the way back to the dressing rooms. He probably didn't think about it, but he had marked himself for life by choosing not to lose honourably like a true warrior. While a night full of surprises was expected, the last thing anyone could imagine was that the Polish giant would escape from the fight by making a true walk of shame. Later, it was revealed that Golota had a broken bone in his head, which could have pierced his brain if the fight had continued. According to his testimony from the locker room, Tyson was euphoric headbutting all the time during, but it called into question the referee's performance because he claimed that Mike didn't even receive a warning for any of them. After this harsh defeat, Golota didn't step into a professional boxing ring again for three years. Despite winning the fight, the outcome of this encounter wasn't entirely positive for Tyson either. Mike decided to take his madness to another level when he didn't care about smoking marijuana before fighting. And it wasn't a rumor this time. Tyson was tested and tested positive for marijuana. It was unheard of. Justice for the alleged headbutts to Galotta, which allegedly put his life at risk, seemed to be looming. Because after Tyson's test result, the commission couldn't remain idle. That's how the result of the fight had to be changed. Now, Mike Tyson was not the winner by technical knockout at the end of the second round. He was declared unfit to continue. What a box of surprises it has been. Although at the time it seemed like a disappointing outcome, all the twists and turns did make it one of the most memorable in the minds of the fans. If you've made it this far, I thank you. Now that you have the complete context of the night when two psychopaths faced off in the ring, what do you think about it? I'll read you in the comments.